So by this point, I'm pretty sure that everyone who wants to see Mirza for season two has seen it, which obviously includes me as well. And so this is the right time to start talking about it. And most people who have seen it like it and appreciate it, which again includes me as well. But if you have seen my previous videos, you know that I am the kind of guy that cuts all vegetables like an onion by peeling it off in layers, both potatoes and brinjal alike. And I tend to do the same with the art I see as well. So today I talk about one such layer of artistic understanding that I came across while I was watching Mirzapur season 2. The stark contrast in the masculine traits between the Tripathi family members in Mirzapur and comparing it with other men on the series. If you are new to this channel then do subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any other Palki Kaluta reviews of mine. And spoilers ahead for Mirzapur season 2. Mirzapur is as much a story of patriarchy as it is about the violence it leads to. The creative minds at Excel Entertainment made it abundantly clear in the last episode of Mirzapur season 2. The hidden themes of where does true power reside in a power structure are often used to progress the story forward. And most often in Mirzapur, it is the men of the Mirzapur series that exercise true power, or at least they used to. And this is especially the case with the family members that gave two and a half kings of Mirzapur, the Tripathis. Now, the patriarchal power dynamic of the Tripathis is embodied in the three generations. Satyanan Tripathi, whom I refer to as the elder, Akhandanan Tripathi, the king, and Fulchan Tripathi, the prince. Each one of them differs in how they embody masculinity, portraying both the good and the ugly traits. अपना ध्यान रखना Let's start with Bauji at first glance, the character portrayed by Kulbushan Kharbanda looks like a wise old elder guiding a hero to his journey, like a Gandalf or a Dumbledore kind of character. In fact, on multiple occasions, it is Bauji who imparts his wisdom and experience onto the king, Kalin Bhaiya, who not only acknowledges the superior wisdom of Bauji, but also respects him for how he single-handedly won Mirzapur and got a lifelong ally in Magpul. Not only that, the purity of his purpose and his conviction towards him made him out to be one of the guys we were rooting for. But this obsession with power never left him even after he left the throne for his son. And in his curiosity, he went back to the animal kingdom to search for answers, literally. His obsession with the power dynamic between a predator and its prey left a deep impression on his mind contorting his once evolved thinking into something animalistic. It completely takes over him in the final episode of season 1, when he forces his Bahu Pina into sexual intercourse with him. In the animal kingdom, sex is the event of power transition and movement. Two or more male members of a species in a confrontation with each other to mate with the female. In such barbaric settings, sex is power. In my previous video on the Chalikatu movie, where I analyze the animalistic instincts of man, link is in the description below. In that video, I argued that such kind of competitive behavior persists to some degree in humanity even today. But the flaw in going full natural in pursuit of power is that humans do not succumb to animalistic intents. Humans hunt animals, not through their muscular strength, but through their patience and intelligence. They wait, but they do fight back. It was evident in the last episode of season 2 when Bauji, someone who views women as nothing but objects of gratification, is butchered by the women whom he assaulted. And his death is structured the same way as how an animal is butchered. Bauji got the same death as an animal. And most probably, Bauji died with the same knife that he used to castrate Raja at the end of the first season. The youngest one in the patriarchy, Munna Bhaiya, is the unapologetic monster of the whole story. With rare to no empathy or remorse for the actions he does, he embodies another well-known masculine trait, bravery. Now, 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 I do not dare even call a guy whose hands are stained with the blood of old people and pregnant women brave. But Muna Bhaiya rarely runs away from a fight, even when he is at the disadvantage. We're talking about a guy who downright invades Jaunpur with an armada, and even being there, he doesn't cover behind, but instead is at the very front, dictating his will. 
when munna and sharat plan a trap to kill gutu and it goes haywire he charges at gutu who even though being partially paralyzed still has the strength to rip munna to shreds there have been many attempts to kill munna all of which failed till the very end of season 2 As I read in the YouTube comment section somewhere, Munna Bhaiya mein taakat kam hai par daring bahut hai. But we cannot ignore the atrocities committed by him from intentional and aggravated murders to killing innocent grooms. The so-called Munna Bhaiya embodies a monster among us. He inhabits the misogynist traits from his grandfather when he treats women as if to only satisfy his needs and not take regard for their well-being. He has a redeeming moment with his wife, the daughter of Uttar Pradesh's CM and the new CM, when he supports her both emotionally and as the new CM against his father's wishes. But the creators of the show make sure that this redeeming moment is short-lived. Again, sorry for the pun. <laughs> this analogy is further amplified when we see Munna's face after his death, a demonic beast-like impression on his face rendered permanent by his deeds. के बाकी साथियों को भी मुक्ति दे दी है मौर्या जी आप जिस शहर में नौकर बन के आए हैं मालिक हो सकते Now what can I say about this guy? He is by far the most complicated character for me to ever analyze. He is the will and the strength of the house of the parties. His motivations are clear and he does evil things but we still root for him. It may be Pankaj Tripathi's amazing charm in and as Kalin Bhaiya or maybe the excellent way in which he has been written but this character is the embodiment of what Mirzapur is all about. Calling Akhandanan Tripathi the best the Tripathis can offer is an understatement. He dons the same red blood of his human brethren that his son revels in but he does so with an unsettling longing. Kalin Bhaiya throughout the seasons of Mirzapur has had only one mission to make Munna eligible enough for the throne of Mirzapur even though he looks much calmer and more composed than his father and his progeny he doesn't refrain from taking quote and quote bahubali approach to his problems under his rules everything seems to work properly which unfortunately in his case is rampant chaos throughout Mirzapur but his personal life is where he fails because Kalin Bhaiya's home is a mess to say the least his version of masculinity is that of an absentee father who chooses work over his family i mean let's count he has a psychopath for a son his first wife who is mentioned only once in mirzapur has either left him or left this world and that too only if leaving one meant leaving the other one as well his second wife is violated by his own father and he himself is nearly impotent he has lost touch with his own family which puts his second wife who is much younger than him in a very weird position all these raging hormones inside her and no manly figure to vent out thus she breaks her sacred marriage vows and engages in infidelity with her servant and all these variables that include him but were not in his control are what lead to his downfall in the finale of season 2 It is the perfect arc for a control freak like Kalin Bhaiya all his efforts to control and manipulate undone by variables he never knew would cost him so much so if we make a table with the tripathi family members in rows and the masculine traits they portray in columns then we do see a sharp contrast in their behaviors one such family that we are introduced to in this season is the tyagis of bihar essentially the same kind of power wielders as the tripathis the tyagis differ from them on various levels When we are first introduced to the Tyagis, they seem to be much more rooted at the ground level with the people than the Tripathis. While the Tripathi dynasty sits in a mansion above Mirzapur, the Tyagis on the other hand wield power from a throne that is relatively more connected to their subjects. The comparison that the creators try to make becomes more apparent with the way both of these families treat their women. The Tripathis abuse women left and right except for Kalin Bhaiya and to some degree Munna Bhaiya. who treat at least their wives pretty fairly except for that one time Kalin Bhaiya verbally abuses Bina for her um, kitchen utensils related condition but their weakness lies in the fact that they don't deem women worthy of wielding power and by they i mean the three parties 
on the other hand you see tyagis who have pleasant meals together and where women have a say in the day to day affairs in fact geeta tyagi the wife of datta tyagi scolds him as well and he takes it pretty fine and i like to think that this family was purposefully introduced in the show to reveal the fallacies of the tripathis but of course following the recurring theme in this season 2 of goodu and goldu now being cursed was more important the curse being that whoever comes in close contact with them dies and so junior tyagi who comes too close to goldu dies i mean maybe who knows i have my own doubts this curse that i'm talking about deserves a video of its own but that's something for later let's stick to the topic so it would be interesting to see in season 3 how the writers continue forth with this parallel between the tripathis and the tyagis considering that another such parallel has been set up by the final episode where both the families have lost their son mirzapur is a masala series through and through no doubt about it with multiple interweaved elements and though i may not agree with some of the creative decisions i have to agree that at the very least it has something on its mind that it wants to share and you have no idea how refreshing that is to someone like me who has been numbed to boredom by bland and passable bollywood movies that have nothing new and innovative to say so on that note I hope you guys like the video. Do share this video to, you know, all your friends who liked watching Mirzapur season 2 and let them see what the hidden layers are in this season because when writers put these hidden things, these hidden themes, the purpose is for us to discover them. And the more we discover, the more we enjoy. So on that note, thank you for watching this video. Sure do hope to see you guys next time.